we get to feel the rush and anxiety right from the first scene. Out in the restaurant, the customers enjoy the ambience and are served by the smiling staff. In the kitchens, there is heat and hustle. There are chefs with their worries, bartenders with their dreams, the waiters with their stories. The commotion versus the calm. Everyone is unaware of each other's pain. Andy Jones is the head chef in his high-end restaurant. He partnered with someone and has built a repute of his restaurant good enough to attract the elite class. Tonight is going to be hectic since it is Christmas time and a lot more customers than usual are dining in. Andy is hustling towards the restaurant. He is on phone with Carly, the team leader in his kitchen, who is asking him to hurry. A health inspector has paid an unexpected visit. After hanging up, he leaves a message to Kelly, his ex-wife, that he is sorry for not being able to be there for their son's swimming contest. He had a lot on his plate lately and couldn't take out time. Done with that, Andy rushes into the restaurant kitchen. Carly is standing cross-armed with the annoyingly fastidious health inspector, Alan Lovejoy. Andy says he needs a few seconds before helping with the inspection. Lovejoy resumes his inspection. He catches Camille washing her hands in the food preparation sink. Carly tells Lovejoy that Camille is a new recruit. Lovejoy goes on to ask Camille about her education regarding safety and hygiene. Carly is quick to answer on Camille's behalf that Camille has level 2 certification. Lovejoy says he needs to see the documents to support this. He proceeds to inspect the fridges. Carly looks tense catering to the inspector all alone. She surely wanted Andy earlier and besides her for this. Lovejoy suggests she keep the fridge temperature lower even though it is at the required degree. Carly chooses not to argue much. He makes Freeman explain how he cooks the ducks, and then points at the cracked kitchen tiles. Carly tells him that a constructor is already called to look at that. Lovejoy asks her to send her a picture of the damaged tiles. He also asks her to ensure Freeman washes his hands regularly since he touches his beard every now and then. After that, he goes to meet Emily and Jamie, the patissiers. Lovejoy has been a fan of Emily's cakes when she ran her own bakery. They recognize each other and have a friendly talk. Finally, something about this restaurant has met Lovejoy's standards. Annie comes and asks Lovejoy to finish his inspection soon as the restaurant's opening time is almost here. Lovejoy says he is done and just needs to talk to him before leaving. They sit at a table. Andy keeps drinking from his bottle. It has got liquor in it, and nobody knows that. It is opaque. Lovejoy tells him that his restaurant's hygiene rating is down from 5 to 3. It is because Andy not doing his job which is to keep track of fridge temperatures, keep checklists complied with and document everything regularly. Andy has been doing it regularly until two months ago. Everything is running downhill for the last two months. He was practically homeless for these two months and got a flat just last night. Lovejoy keeps asking him to focus on what he is saying. He is making him understand that his rating can be 5 again only if he takes his documentation seriously. Andy keeps going back to other errors Lovejoy had mentioned. Errors made by Camille and Tony. Errors aren't the reason behind his dropped rating. Andy seems fatigued, lost, and zoned out. Lovejoy leaves, giving an ultimatum of three months to overcome the shortcomings and pointing at the glass cup Andy had been drinking coffee from even in the kitchen. Glass isn't allowed in the kitchen as per safety rules. Andy shouts at Camille for washing her hands in the wrong sink. Carly defends her again that she is new. Andy counters that by saying she is experienced enough to know such a basic rule. He then yells some more and swears a lot, asking Tony to wear gloves while opening oysters. Tony says this section is Hobbs's, not his. And it is Jake's job to keep clearing used cutlery off this section. Lovejoy pointed to the piled up cutlery there. Andy isn't in the mood to listen to any justification. He turns around to Carly to tell her the menu they are presenting tonight. Carly tells they have some ingredients and are short on some. Beef and lamb aren't enough. Apparently, it was Andy's job to make sure about meat. Freeman gets angry at Andy for lagging behind in his responsibilities repeatedly. Andy says he is sorry. Freeman doesn't seem to see this getting better anytime sooner. Carly tries to calm the situation, saying it will be managed somehow. She seems to be covering for Andy's incompetence which has become a daily occurrence now. She informs Andy that Lovejoy discarded Turbot since it wasn't labeled. Labeling is important in a commercial kitchen to help in knowing expiry dates, storage temperature and allergens. Andy starts yelling again asking why it wasn't labeled. Turbot is the most expensive food fish, and no chef would want his be wasted like that. Carly stays silent. Freeman won't. He shouts back at Andy telling him it was him prepping Turbot last night and it was his duty to label it. Andy has nothing but to apologize. Carly takes hold of the situation. She says it is okay. She builds up positive energy in the tense kitchen and asks everyone to start working. She asks Andy to take a few minutes break. She knows he is sleep deprived. Andy meets Beth, the manager, away from the kitchen near the bar. She asks about the sudden drop from 5 to 3. He talks about him not being able to maintain documentation lately. She says it is very humiliating and he should amend it soon. Carly has a job offer from another restaurant. She wants a raise in her salary at this restaurant to decline the offer. She only has tonight left to accept the offer. She asked Andy to talk to Beth about the pay raise. She asks him if he has done it. Andy says he did talk to Beth last night and she will look into it. Carly says she needs an answer tonight. 
He says okay. He then apologizes to Camille and Tony for yelling at them. At that very moment, Beth asks everybody to gather for a briefing. Exactly then, Andy answers his phone despite Beth asking him not to. It is Kelly. Andy says he is busy and will call her back later. The crew gathers. Beth asks about Robin and Jake who are late. Someone's tongue slips about Robin, one of the waitresses, being at her audition and then somehow covers it up. Jake is late like always. He and Sophia are dishwashers here. Sophia looks more annoyed than anybody at Jake being late. Beth starts her briefing. She says that there are a hundred bookings tonight. Everybody looks upset about this. She goes on to talk about a reservation for a proposing couple and a celebrity chef Alistair Skye. Carly looks at Andy when Alistair is mentioned. Beth asks everyone especially Freeman to keep their voices down when swearing. After the briefing is done, she takes out her phone to take a selfie for Instagram. The bar staff and the waiting staff are the most cheerful of the crew. Andy asks Beth why she didn't inform him about Alistair earlier. She doesn't understand his concern. He says he would have prepped food on time and properly. Beth says he should be doing it properly every day. Alistair is Andy's past. Someone he has worked for as a head chef. And him dining in here matters a lot to Andy. Andy carries his documentation file, places it on a shelf, sips his bottle and joins Carly at the station. He says to Carly that he wants to take tonight off. Carly says no. It is a busy night, and he can't leave her in control of an uncontrolled situation. She knows he is panicking because of Alistair. She tries to calm him, saying he is a better chef than Alistair and he is going to pull it off tonight. Alistair's dining here might draw more customers since he is famous now. And he sees Camille struggling with preparation of the dressing. He goes up to her and tells her to ask for help wherever she needs it. He is polite and nice, making her feel comfortable. She says she has a hard time understanding his Liverpool accent. Her experience in the French kitchen has been different than in English. Andy asks Tony what he is doing. Andy is proud of Tony for using restaurant lingo. We are seeing Andy's leadership skills and goodness at heart which apparently were there all the time two months ago. Now they show up rarely. Andy's phone rings. It is Nathan's, his son, call. He won the contest. Andy is happy and says he is sorry for missing it. Andy hangs up, seeing Robin checking in late. She says the train was late. Beth doesn't want to hear her excuses. She asks her to serve table 7. Table 7 has a family of four. Everyone is sweet except the patriarch. He looks high maintenance. Robin smiles and is sweet while taking their order. He orders the most expensive wine on the menu. The air around the bar is light and cheery. Billy is clinking glass and chit-chatting with the customer here for the proposal, Frank. Andrea is asking Robin about her audition while folding napkins. Dean is the supervisor at the bar. Beth asks Andrea and Robin to stop chatting. She asks Andrea to serve table 7. The man there isn't happy to see a black waitress. His racism is oozing out in his demeanor. He is irritable for nothing. Andrea must smile only and be polite in response to such behavior. Now we see the tribulations of the waiting staff as well. While they are working, Carly asks Andy about Nathan and how he is putting up with his parents' separation. Carly is happy to learn that Andy has got a place for himself finally. She asks him to call her whenever he needs some help. Andy helps Camille with her cutting. He guides Tony on how to be more efficient. Jamie calls for Andy to taste the dessert spread he has prepared. Andy goes to the pastry section in the back. Before he can check the dessert, he sees Sophia with a lot of utensils still unwashed. Sophia asks him not to blame her. Jake is supposed to be doing the washing with her and he is not here yet. Emily seconds Sophia's complaint. Andy gets back to Jamie. There is too much of a lemon in the spread. He asks Jamie to fix it under Emily's supervision. He leaves, asking Jamie to roll up his sleeves as per the rule. Emily starts rolling Jamie's sleeves for him. He resists. She sees he has cuts all over one of his arms. She steps back. Jamie turns his back to her and gets to fixing the spread. Emily tears up and sniffles. She goes to him and hugs him. He hugs back as if he needed it for a very long time. Emily says they will talk about it when they are alone. She pulls herself together and tastes the fixed dessert spread. It tastes delicious now. Jake has arrived. Sophia is mad at him for being so late. Jake is too carefree to care. He laughs and says his alarm didn't ring on time. Sophia is too angry to bear him laughing and making excuses. Andy comes and inquires about Jake. Jake's replies are too funny. Sophia is angrier, seeing everyone being easy on Jake. She says nobody cares about her pregnancy. Andy asks her to take a break for a couple of minutes and orders Jake to finish all the washing. Then he tastes Jamie's spread and can't stop tasting it. It is that good. Andy goes back to the front kitchens. Beth asks where he was. He says he was in the back kitchen to check on desserts. She says he should be in the front ones when she needs him. He says he can be in one place at a time. He needs to manage each place in the kitchen. She doesn't care to understand. He asks her if she has talked to her father about increasing Carly's salary. Beth says there is no time for this and goes back to her work. Her serious facial expressions change into polite ones when a customer stops her to ask about the wine menu. She goes to Dean and chides him for not doing his job which is to provide drinks menus to customers. Dean is cool and breezy even when being chided. He sets off to handle the situation. Beth receives a customer, Mary. She is invited by Frank, who is going to propose to her. Beth makes a small cheerful talk with her while bringing her to Frank. 
They sit at table 13. Frank reminds Beth of an email he had sent her earlier about Mary's allergy. Seems like Beth missed reading the email. She requests him to repeat it for her again. No nuts for Mary. She writes it down on paper and asks Andrea to take it to the kitchen. On receiving it, Carly says it should have been on the system. She announces the allergy to everyone in the kitchen. Andy sips his bottle and says he will be back in a minute. Carly pleads with him to stay and work. But Andy is distracted by Alistair. He goes to receive him. Alistair has brought a food critic with him. Sarah Southworth. That is something alarming and distasteful to do. Sarah laughs at Alistair being anxious. She says she is only here to have dinner. She compliments the restaurant's ambience. Alistair brags about his clout, book and TV shows. Sarah jokes about him going through the menu repeatedly. No wonder Alistair cares about Andy's successful business the way Andy's mind is occupied with Alistair. Alistair says a lot of dishes on Andy's menus were his inventions. Andy defends that they were definitely Andy's. Alistair keeps reiterating that he and Sarah are here just to enjoy food and encourage him. Andy is back to the kitchen. Freeman and Carly are really irked by Alistair bringing a food critic with him. Carly instructs everybody to be extra careful with serving their table. Andy, in a hurry, burns his hand while handling the saucepan. He swears in pain. Beth comes rushing to ask him about not following her instruction about not swearing loudly. Jake is out in the back with an excuse to take out the trash. He takes a stroll and smokes. He has a woman waiting to meet him there in her car. She says she will pick him up when his shift ends. Andrea is serving a table when some guys from another table call her. They want steak and chips. Andrea tells them the restaurant doesn't serve steak and chips. They are an Instagram influencers with a lot of followers. They say they can help the restaurant soar higher if they are served better. One of them starts filming. Andrea asks him not to film her. The guys say a waitress should smile. Andrea goes away and sends Beth. Beth offers them complimentary drinks and says she can get them steaks and chips. They complain of Andrea being in a bad mood. They promise they will post pictures of food and follow the restaurant on Instagram. In the kitchen, Carly is angry at Beth for accepting an order that isn't on the menu. Beth doesn't understand what is so hard about steaks and chips. Carly argues that they have a lot of orders in line already. Too jammed to cater to an exclusive order. Andy says he will do it. Freeman is furious at him for entertaining Beth's unreasonable dealings. Dean is taking drinks orders from American women at a table. He sounds jolly and interesting to them. He knows the bar is out of some drinks. He knows how to convince the ladies for the ones the bar has. He offers them complimentary shots. He doesn't forget to tell them to come to the club he is working at later tonight. He is back at the bar and tries to tell himself that he loves his job. His way to calm himself. Alistair's table order is here. Andy asks Carly to take care of the starters and he will prepare the main course. Carly finds a lot of mess at Tony's station. He says it is Jake's task to clear up. Carly goes to get him. He is sitting idle, watching football on his phone. Sophia is yelling at him for not helping. She asks Carly to fire him. Carly drags the laughing Jake to the front kitchen to do his job. She asks Andy to do something about him. She must have said this to him millions of times before. Andy says he will, like always. Tony has prepared desserts and is showing them to Carly before serving. Carly appreciates him for his good work. Table 7 has sent back the lamb saying it is undercooked. Freeman and Carly check the lamb and say it is pink the way it is supposed to be. Andrea says she did explain to the customers, but they want it to be cooked again. Freeman loses his cool and says he will explain it to them. Andy stops him and asks him to put it on the grill again. Beth comes to the kitchen and asks about the plate that was sent back. She keeps saying the customer isn't happy and it is as simple as that. Carly wants her to understand that the food was prepared exactly the way it was supposed to be. If the customer isn't happy even with the food prepared exactly the way, he ordered isn't the kitchen's problem. Carly asks her to train her waiting staff so that they take the orders in detail. She asks Beth to stop holding the kitchen staff accountable for her own mistakes. She booked in a lot of customers. Then she asked for a dish that isn't on the menu. Allergy instructions weren't put in the system. Beth should be focusing more on learning how to do her job than building social media profile. Carly says no one likes Beth. She treats no one with respect. Beth feels underpaid. She says she will still be underpaid even when her pay is increased. Beth says what pay increase she is referring to. Apparently, it is Beth's answer to her request made through Andy. Beth asks Carly to watch her tongue next time. Beth goes into the bathroom and cries. She calls her dad and tells him that she doesn't feel she can do this job. Nobody likes her. She comes out of the bathroom, fixes herself up and goes back to try to manage it all again. Alistair asks Robin to get him some spices as his food tastes a little bland. He tells Sarah how Andy always needed him to excel. Sarah says she is loving the food. It is perfect. Alistair is directing her attention to whatever negative he finds in a dish. Sarah asks what he is trying to do. Is he pushing her to write a bad review about Andy's restaurant? Alistair is surely aware of what he wants. He tends not to show. Billy, Dean and Robin are having a chit-chat at the bar. Freeman gives the well-cooked lamb to Andrea for table 7. He asks her to tell the customers about how the cooked lamb is supposed to be. Andrea places the plate on the table. The racist man has an issue this time with her fingerprints on the plate's edges. She delivers Freeman's message. The man is about to say something harsher when she interrupts him and asks them politely to enjoy their meal. 
The man scoffs at her for not having any etiquette. Beth talks to Carly about having drinks together later. Carly says sure. Beth says she is going to talk to Table 7 about the lamb problem. Table 13 is done with their starters. Their mains are almost ready. Camille is about to dress and garnish them. She notices she is out of the house dressing. She asks Andy who tells her to use the other dressing available for this order and to prepare house dressing after that for the next orders. Carly doesn't forget to ask Andy every now and then if he is doing okay. Everyone is extra welcoming towards table 13 the way Beth has instructed. Billy, Dean and Robin are again chit-chatting at the bar. Robin and Billy are seeing each other. Alistair's mains are ready. Andy is serving them himself. He takes a seat at the table. Sarah is gone to attend a call. Andy asks Alistair's agenda behind coming here uninformed and with Sarah on top of that. He wonders if his wife knows he is with Sarah. Alistair says he is here because of the 200,000 pounds Andy borrowed from him and he has not been answering his phone calls for the last month. They are interrupted by Instagram influencers who want to take a photo with Alistair Sky. Alistair tells Andy that he will be broke soon and will be in need of the hefty amount he lent him. Andy says he hasn't got that much in a lump sum. He can pay it off in small installments. Alistair says Andy can make him a partner in his superb restaurant and he won't have to pay back the loan. Andy says he already has a partner. Alistair says he and Andy are great as a team. Andy has cooking skills. Alistair has a mind of a businessman. Sarah is back at the table. The men have gone silent. She eats the food and compliments it. She asks Andy about his son and tells her she has two daughters. She says she was on a call with one of them just now. She finds it harder to manage her kids and her career. It looks like she will break down any minute. She says men don't have to go through this much of a dilemma. She is impressed with Alistair and Andy for not going crazy because of work and family pressure. Alistair says she shouldn't have married a self-obsessed man like her husband in the first place. The irony. Alistair is clearly a self-absorbed person. Andy leaves the table to answer Nathan's call. Andy is sorry for not giving him a call back yet. He has to hang up when he hears Frank calling for help. Mary is having an allergic reaction. Everybody panics in the kitchen and at the bar. Frank has called the ambulance. It is on its way. Beth helps Mary out of the restaurant. Andrea wraps a jacket around her. Sarah and Alistair get out to be there. Annie doesn't know what to do. He seems lost. He first starts walking to the back of the kitchen and then retreats to where everybody is with Mary. Amid the chaos, Beth asks Andrea if she would like to have drinks with her someday later. Andrea says okay. Amid the chaos, Alistair asks Andy to put the blame on Carly as she is the leader next to Andy. Alistair says he will take care of this mess for the media. All Andy has to do is save his skin in this restaurant. The ambulance has arrived. Andy goes back inside. Beth is requesting the influencers to remove the recording of Mary choking that they have uploaded online. Andy asks her and the entire staff to gather in the back kitchen. He inquires about the table 13 order. He learns the dishes had no nuts. Camille says she ran out of house dressing for 13 tables mains, so she used the other one as per Andy's instructions. Carly asks what the ingredients of the other dressing were. Camille says it had walnuts. It takes her a moment to realize. Everybody goes silent after a gasp. Andy says to the now crying Camille that it is okay. Beth says Mary is going to be okay. It isn't much of a big deal. Freeman shakes his head in amazement and anger. He calls Beth stupid for calling it no big deal. He points his finger at Andy and says it is entirely his fault. He always shows up late. He doesn't perform his regular duties. He has a drinking problem. Andy loses his temper. He advances towards Freeman to hit him. Everybody holds him back. Carly bangs the table to make everybody go silent. She asks Freeman to go out and orders everybody to get back to work for the remaining customers. Andy is left with her. He admits to her that it is his fault. She asks him to breathe and stay calm. Suddenly Alistair enters from the back door. Andy pushes him out of the kitchen. He tells Carly what Alistair had proposed to him. Carly is angry at this. She says she can't handle this anymore. She will take the job offer she has from the other place. She is going to quit after tonight. Andy goes to his office in the back. He is clearly out of his element. He has been all over the place for the past two months. Today it has exploded. He takes out his phone and calls Kelly. Nathan has gone to sleep after waiting for his dad's call. Andy tells Kelly to apologize to Nathan on his behalf and tell him that he loves him too. Kelly must have said that he needs to show the love he claims to have for Nathan. Andy says he does show, it is just that everything at work had him occupied lately. Kelly must have felt that he has taken Andy admits and says he really wants to quit though. He promises he will rehabilitate himself. He starts weeping while on call. He takes deep breaths, hangs up the call and throws away the and the wine bottles. He wipes off his face and straightens up to get back to work. He falls. He has reached his boiling point. 